It's a brand new day hey. Wake up every morning and say It's a brand new day hey. Take a good day, make it great okay? Cause if you got some lemons, make some lemonade Yeah, taste those clouds away It's a brand new day hey. It's a brand new day It's a brand new day Okay, okay My whole life got them hand me down But what that meant was I had my family round Welcome back, interwebs. Happy to have you. So, uh, unfortunately, this is going to be pretty small video, and the reason being is, obviously, in that little video montage you saw, uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on, and obviously, right now, um, I have two short weeks left, basically, to get this thing ready. Uh, to go to United by Bronco there in uh, San Hollow, Utah. But I've been out of town every week, the last three weeks for work, and the next two weeks leading up to the trip, I'll still be out of town. So uh, I worked frantically Friday night, I worked frantically Saturday, uh, all day Saturday, put 11 and a half hours in yesterday on this alone. And then I've got an all day today too. And um, there's still gonna be a lot left. I leave tomorrow morning and I'll be gone all week. So it's really about right now, I'm really just trying to hammer in it. It's not that I don't wanna put on a quality video for you guys, it's just I'm literally behind the eight ball and I'm trying to get that stuff taken care of so we can get this thing roadworthy and ready because really the next trip I wanna get after United by Bronco is I need to get that guy Brock Landers, uh, or excuse me, gosh, man, it's, it's so new. Uh, Oh, and just so you know, his name is Max Landers. Uh, this is Max Landers. I think it's hilarious. Reminds me of something off of, uh, I don't know, Anchorman or something. Anyway, so Max Landers. But also, I want to get I want to get some towing stuff done with uh, Kong because I haven't been on a trip with him. And we've got a place that's not too far away from here that I can hook him up, take him, and do some tow testing, right? I want to see, obviously, the difference in the Raptor and pulling Kong. But also, I want to check... How does the new suspension work? How is how roadworthy is it? How are the road manners? The, you know, we, we built the extended travel arms on Kong and removed the timber and put in springs. And so I'm curious to see what it operates like. So hopefully we can get that done very soon as well because like I said, we've got this coming up. Then after that, subsequently, it'll be United by Bronco. Uh, the 28th, 9th, 1st uh, and 2nd, into March, we'll be at United by Bronco. And then after that, I want to get that dude on the road. Following that will be more trips. I don't know if it's going to be Big Ben National, National State Park here in Texas, or if I'm going to try to get up to some snow. Either way, we've got a lot of stuff coming. And so I really need to get this guy. Oh, and then we have Flagstaff in March, uh, Expo West, Flagstaff. And then I'm still contemplating uh, Expo I guess PNW, Pacific Northwest, in Oregon. So there's just a whole lot to be done in a short period of time. And I just unfortunately don't have a lot of time because of my uh, obligations during the week for work. Uh, obviously, we know that that's uh, the number one thing right now. And so this is what we got. I'll jump in and show you what I've done so far. It's only been a week, but we made some good progress in three-ish days. So let's check it out. So let's take a look in here. So what we've done is this is a Ford factory utility box built under uh, the original Ford platform. And what I decided to do is I'm going to use this for my battery management system. And so you can see I went with Victron, Victron uh, DC to DC charger, alternator, battery smart charging into a 100 amp max distribution center. We have our shunt right there. And then we also have our Victron MPPT troller, uh, solar controller with Bluetooth. And so what this will do is this will be able to give us the ability to manage our system. And then secondly, I'll end up putting my uh, smart shunt controller readout right there so I can understand what's happening with the battery in real time. Uh, over here, sorry about the lighting, but I've added dual USB ports at the same time, um, 
I added the Dometic uh, hardening system. And what this is is a twist-in application for your refrigerator so it doesn't come down on the trail. And then a secondary 12-volt plug. Along with that, I always run rock lights inside of the vehicle. The reason being is I switch from white light, red light. It just depends on what I'm doing. If the, if the doors are open, I don't want to attract bugs. But what's really nice about it is I can set the color temperature to what I want and the intensity to what I want to have internal lighting without the dome lights going off because this all runs off this system here. Now, eventually, we'll have a 400 watt panel on top that'll come down and feed this. It'll route up there to the main cubby area and up there I'll have a 140 amp hour lithium battery along with the Vitron 1200 watt uh, inverter. That'll be the battery system for this rig. Right here you can't see it but I've already drilled and prepared the holes right here for the diesel heater. The diesel heater will sit right there. Now this time, let's talk about this. Uh, this time, diesel heater. The biggest drawbacks I had with uh, Brock Landers and a uh, 5KW is two things. What I realized is all my history of the diesel heater setups, even the intake for the diesel heater system, I had pulling from outside air. And the reason why that matters is twofold. One, because the ambient temperature it's pulling out is not the recirculated air you're heating. And the reason why that matters is when it goes in, that air is colder, therefore the flame has to burn hotter to create the heat to exit the system, creating less soot, first of all. Secondly, the temperature that the thermostat reads is only relative to what's inside, not relative to the air being pulled in, heated up, and then blown into the system. I think that are the two biggest reasons why I was getting soot buildup, because I've run all my other heaters at six before and never had what I had this last time. And so I figured twofold. This time, I, when I ordered that five kilowatt, they didn't have a two and a half kilowatt available. The reason why I wanted a two and a half kilowatt is it's for a small space, but also you can run it harder. The hotter and harder you can run a diesel engine, the less soot it produces. So therefore, now when I run this, uh, small two and a half kilowatt heater at say six or seven, it's gonna be running far hotter, which means it's far more efficient, but it still won't produce the same amount of heat as that five kilowatt dud. There, therefore, it'll still be manageable in, in the space, but no soot. Secondly, my intake temperature uh, for the burn chamber and such is gonna be pulled from outside air. I'm not gonna, uh, vent it again internally so that the air that it's pulling in and recirculating is the same heated air. So that should help dramatically. Moving on. After this, there will be a few changes done to this guy. Not a whole lot. Remember, we talked about it. This is, this is not the guy that's gonna do a lot. We're gonna do a tailgate table. Um, that's the platform system setting up over there and other than that, internally, we're not going to do a whole lot. I mean, I'll have to do some kind of phone mounting system. But other than that, um, I just don't see a lot of need to do some of the things we did in the past. Now, through uh, testing and stuff like that, will we change things? We may change spring rates in the rear or the front or something. I don't know. That's down the road. But then also, will we do performance upgrades? Down the road, we will. I do want to go to a high clearance uh, muffler system because this one doesn't have one. It's sort of high, but... It's still kind of low-hanging fruit where it's in the back, and, and I'd like to get that tucked up. Secondly, we always want to create more free-flowing air through a turbocharged engine, which is what this is. So it's the 3.0 liter twin turbo. So obviously we want to increase the size of the downpipes coming out of the turbos, and then the diameter size from the exhaust all the way back. That will help this engine be more efficient. If you're burning air and putting in a cold air intake, but you're not changing the diameter of your exhaust leaving the engine, you're doing nothing because it's air in and air out is what creates efficiency and more performance. So those things will change eventually, but they are nowhere near on the map. The things that are biggest on the map now 
It's a battery system and a heating system, obviously because I will be sleeping internally in this and not be taking a trailer on some of my trips. And so I need a heating system for up in the mountains and then I need a battery system to run my CPAP. All this stuff back here will be individual and separate from the main start battery. That, recovery. The next big purchase we'll do for this guy will be kind of twofold. And I haven't decided what I want to do. And this is where I want you guys to jump in because this is important. We'll talk about it. Do, 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 do. So what we're talking about is up here really, right? So up here, let's get you guys set up so you can see the front of this guy. Okay, so here we are. So what we are talking about is two things. The next big purchase is gonna be two things. Some type of winch bumper apparatus and winch and lighting. This is where I struggle. And the reason why I struggle is you know I'm pro-American, I'm huge American and stuff. At the same time, inflation is bananas. I work very hard. Uh, we build um, wireless towers and communication towers all across Texas. I work very hard our week, so I appreciate what I make. The problem with that being said is that inflation is based off a lot of things going on in our country right now, but at the same time, people's inflated opinion about their skill set for what they are worth and what they require as pay is unfortunate. And the reason why I say that is because two things. I get a lot of flack about running the Apex Badland Winch. I'm sorry, it's from China, but tell me this. Can you prove to me that you've seen something better or touched one better? The reason why I say that is this is the fifth rig on the channel I built and I will absolutely put another one on there. And the reason being is I've had one yet to fail and I've put over under major, 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 major stress. Multiple pulls and never had an issue. Now, if you wanna go check somebody out, you can go check out Muddy Beard's four by four. He had an issue where he broke a gear ring, I think is what it was. Um, but he will tell you, he was pulling far beyond the capabilities of a 12,000 pound winch and that's what broke it. Funny thing is, he got in touch with them directly. They immediately sent him the parts, put it back together. He built it back himself, and it was flawless ever since. So again, you can tell me what you think and create your opinion about that, but that's my opinion on it, and, I'm, and, and so I'm gonna, again, go with the Apex. It's wireless, and it's a 12,000 pound, and it's $600. Show me another winch that has those amounts of capabilities and options for the same price range. I dare you, you can't. So, I'm sorry, you can be mad at me, but that's my rent for the Apex. Secondly, I've worked with Colat for a long time when I first started. When I very first started three years ago, they reached out to me a few, a few times and I tried their stuff. I hate to say this, but man, for the price compared to what they are, for what you get in a relative space with American made, like it's just not fair. Like they're, they're hands down delivering product that's equal to over most companies, uh, consumer based stuff. I'm not talking about racer edition and I'm not talking about pro edition that you don't need anyway as an overlander or rock crawler. The only time you need pro or racer is if you're physically doing some type of Ultra 4, uh, Tecate, Mint, uh, Baja, something like that. Because the stuff that's below that is, is more than capable for what you are gonna do with your rig. That being said, man, I'm, I, I need some help. Because I went with Heretic on the last two vehicles uh, the Gladiator, well, matter of fact, class three. The Gladiator, the JL, the supercharged JL, the, gla the diesel Gladiator, uh, Canada tuned, and then that, and then of course, Brock Landers were all Heretic Studios. I love their product, I really do. Um, one of the biggest issues I have is the, the amber. I, I don't appreciate the amber color for, I, I like a, uh, a less amber color and more warm yellow. You see better. It's less um, fatiguing on your eye. And so not only does it cut, cut the ability to see through the dust and 
make it easier to see the dust, it physically makes it easier on your eye to register what's going on in the dust. So those are huge. So take that amber, that high orange, bring that down to a soft yellow, and guess what? You're less fatiguing on your eyes and you actually can see better because you have better, better penetration through the dust. And I can tell you a million reasons why, but I believe that they, that, that type of yellow is less refractive because its wavelengths are smaller and therefore it's hitting less of the particles in the air and coming back at you. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of science to this. But anyway, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Adapt XP from Rigid. Um, I'm thinking, and it's all in four sets. It'll be four pods, two here, two on a bar. And two will be dedicated ambers, two will be dedicated whites. So the rigid adapt pods, ambers, whites, uh, the Colite nine inch uh, driving, yellows, whites, and then I'm contemplating some Baja designs, LP9s or sixes. Same thing, again, two ambers, two whites. Because I'm basically gonna do much. Um, that's, I, I wanna keep this build minimal, right? And the reason being is because the less things you have on it, the less things are gonna break. So that's what I'm thinking. So do me a favor, please, as you're watching this, post your suggestion and at least give me a reason why. If you haven't tried to co-light, go look at them. So each one of those 9,000 uh, spots is 10,000 lumens, okay? It's got an amber marker light, a uh, running light that matches these. So that kind of helps. The Adapt do three lights in one. Wide, and then more focused, wide in spot, and then hyper spot. All at the same time, they're GPS chipset, so they manipulate themselves as you drive. The, the higher speed uh, you drive, they change, okay? So that's really cool. And then the yellow matches these yellows. So it, it works more. So I have these factory fogs in yellow, and then I would have another set of spots, wides, and hyper spots in that same yellow, which I think would be dramatically uh, effective in dust and stuff like that following people. And then again, the Bajas. I don't know, I, I mean, I'm really torn. Uh, but because a lot of it is, I wanna show you guys that there's other things out there because let me tell you something, everybody's budget is not endless. And you guys are looking at the Raptor and I've had people already make comments. Endless money, free money, you're crazy. So I just told you that this is the fifth vehicle I've built on this channel. I hand built all the bumpers, the racks, the Baja systems, all the suspension systems, all the axle trussing, uh, all the boxing, all the framing, uh, lights, electrical systems, uh, air tank systems, five to 10 gallon air tank, twin air tank systems. So I've really built these, I've taken a vehicle, I built the entire RIP supercharger kit on the Jeep JL, I did a delete on uh, the Gladiator, all the tuning, all the ECM re reflash and all that stuff, I built all of that stuff, so um, like, it's taken me a long time to get here, but it helped because taking all that stuff and rolling it over each vehicle as I made that money and put it into that money and then put it into that money, it easily helps take care of this. So Brocklanders was kind of the epitome and, and pinnacle of all of it. And when I sold that, it easily took care of this. So money is still a budget thing for me. And so I, I'm very frugal about things that you know are important to me and and things that we should uh, pick. So you tell me, what do you think? Colite, should I do the budget way? Because they're impressive. I'll just tell you right now, hands down, if you saw them, you'd be like, dang, dang. And, and another thing, I've got two sets of lights that I've used underneath vehicles and on knuckle, knuckle steering brackets for four years now four different vehicles through everything. And they still fire up and operate and look brand new. Hold on, I'll look at one. Check this out. Clean it up, okay. <laughs> hey, this dude is four years old. Look in the lens, look at that. 
it is perfectly clear. The housing all looks good. There's no leaking. All the wiring looks good. It's not cracking. You can see it all looks good behind. The mount still looks good. It's all metal. Uh, and look at this really cool compression fitting they have in the back of there. I mean, that's, that's what I'm telling you. They're not cheap lights. And so they're cheap as first price. They are not cheaply made or designed. Anyway, these are the lights that I use on the steering knuckles. So when you turn your wheels, and I can't remember who they're from, I wish I did. When you turn your wheels, they follow the wheels, okay? And a neat thing about these is I can go between uh, a white light and an amber light, and they are dramatic. They put out dramatic amounts of light. I think, and don't, don't quote me on this, but I wanna say they're between either 3,000 lumens and 4,200 lumens, I, I just can't remember. But they are bananas because with this, uh, I'll show you like this, with this actual optic, it's a really cool um, rectangle projection. And so it really fills in right below your headlights and everything you're trying to see in a trail really well because it's very focused. It's not just being thrown anywhere. And so that's what I thought was one of the coolest things I'd seen for that position of light because usually you get a flood spectrum or you get a spot spectrum or a hyper. This is kind of in between. It's literally a rectangle focal point and it really fills all the medium area. So that's just one of their products. They've got some really cool stuff. Now they do have their cheaper in stuff that I um, don't approve of because it is subpar. But things like this, this light right here, uh, the four pod or the four uh, LED pod, I think it's a three inch, is bananas. It, it also has dual beam chip technology where you could do amber or white and they're ridiculous. They're like 6,000 lumens a piece. So two of those is 12,000 lumens raw lumens and I think I think the pair is like 150 bucks or something and then of course they have the pods the driving series the Mars series is again just as impressive if you'll go look at those lights their capability and their lux output for what they're putting out and what you're paying is bananas so anyway what do we do what do you want to see do you want to see budget which you can really afford and that that honestly four years old there is no oxidation uh, and they were under the cars they were underneath, right next to the knuckle. So what do you want to see? Do you want to see budget? Do you want to see the rigid adapt? Do you want to see the Baja? I don't know, tell me. And then also, if you have them, put your comments below, do me a favor. Tell me what you have, why, and what you like about them. So that helps me formulate, and, and whoever else is watching the channel, all of our buddies, it'll help us decide because every one of us do this. What do I wanna buy? Oh gosh, the prices are crazy. What's the in-between? So help me, okay? Let's help some people out. Okay, so let's talk about the first mod. So the Bronco Raptors first mod uh, was actually done by the, G, uh, the general manager of the dealership that I got them from. And that's who this uh, vehicle came from. But it was the screen protector, which I totally believe is, is something you should do because it alleviates tearing up the screen, scratching it, and it always looks crystal clear. My first mod was this. So from Rigid, you can order these amber covers. They clip right on and they dramatically change uh, the light output on this because obviously from factory, you have no fogs. Well, the neat thing about it is between this and some wiring harnesses from SPV, I now have all of these factory forward um, Fog lights, both sides, all running on the fog switch. SPV has a switch, a switch that you wire and a wiring harness that you wire in. You wire, the outsides are wired to aux switch one for whatever reason. It takes those, puts them back on the aux switch or back on the um, factory fog switch and then recovers your um, aux switch one and takes the lead back up top so you can use it. So. That's my first mod, and it is a smart mod because there's no reason to use those little bitty fog lights on aux one, which I think is your 30 amp or 40 amp uh, aux switch. So that's my first mod. And then I guess the rest of the mods are all these things that we've done so far. 
So, free money. How you knew, what you knew, I don't know. But, there's lots more things to come. And, like I said, this is going to be a short video, but it kind of needs to be. Because literally, right now, I'm going to take my jacket off. I need to put another coat, the final coat, on the floor system, on the top, and the, both uh, lit hub, cubby covers, flip it over and do the bottom. At the same time, while that's drying, I'm going to be back in this thing, adding uh, the two lights on this side, plus the shunt uh, digital readout controller, and then I have to install the knuckle lights and wire them. I need to, uh, gosh, there's just so much. I mean, there's literally so much. I have the Maybet pocket replacements that I need to put in for the, all doors so that I can have more storage. And then once that gets in, I've still got to wire the battery, the inverter. Um, I have to install the WeBoost. So lots of things to do. I need to run the WeBoost uh, antenna cable out here. I already have run a, a wire right here for my Ambers. And it comes right here. It connects to this factory wire that's just right above that uh, fender well. It goes to the front. That'll be my uh, amber switch. I need to wire my reverse lights that tie in here with this, that go to the mount that sits on the back tire, the spare tire mount, because I have an additional set of KC V2 clears that I used in addition to the white reverse to help just kind of broadcast more light. But I need to wire all that in. So I have so much to do in the next two weeks. And then, like I said, I leave tomorrow morning. I'll be gone a week. I'll get back on Friday. I'll pound this on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then, basically hope to wrap it all up. So, thanks for following. Thank you so much for supporting me. It is ridiculous the support I get, and I appreciate it. Um, you know, if you're watching the video right now, you'll see a heart, you can, you can donate a dollar, you can buy me a coffee, you know, it all helps because, like I said, I have to buy all this stuff myself, all the grinding, all the metal, all the stuff that I do for DIY teaching and, and technique stuff, uh, all the trailer stuff, all of that stuff comes out of my pocket. So, any way you wanna help is, is you know greatly appreciated severely uh appreciated because it takes a lot to do all this um that being said i have a patreon www.patreon.com forward slash maximum overland you can donate there um you can like and share this video that helps a lot too uh but remember i appreciate you having here and uh we'll see you next time Oh.